سنبدا الان مع محاضره بعنوان ربط العالم الغير مرتبط من خلال الاتصالات يقدمها نائب مدير العام لدى شركه سيسكو الاستاذ عبد الله السواحه Connecting the unconnected world. I would like to thank you so much for giving me this fabulous opportunity to talk to you here today about how digitization can transform people, societies, businesses, and practically the world. If we talk about digitization, and if you ask the World Economic Forum, they would tell you that every 10% increase in digitization, تقريبا من 1.5 الى 2% on the world economy. If you look at it from a G20 perspective, وسعودية لله الحمد هي G19, you're talking about an economic value from digitization, from leveraging the internet economy and the digital economy of four trillion dollars. So let's give, you, let's give you some data points around how accelerated the pace of change is today. If you look at the Fortune 500 companies, the top companies around the world, 24% only have survived the past 25 years. And if I look into the future, you're talking here about only one third of the Fortune 500 companies around the world will survive and will either be disruptors out of the disrupted entities. The question here for you today is which business are you going to be? Are you going to be the business, the entity that will disrupt an industry, or the disrupted? So let's begin with the digital world, how entrepreneurship through leveraging digitization in the internet economy have revolutionized the world. And I'll give you a few examples. A lot of people have used the Amazon example, how Amazon disrupted the bookstore industry, becoming the largest e-commerce store, store around the world, and then definitely becoming the largest cloud provider in the world. But here I'm going to share with you three examples from point-of-sale industry, the taxi industry, and the hotel industry. And the common theme between those three companies is that they have identified four disrupting technologies that have changed everything within our century. The first one is mobility. They have realized that all of you have a supercomputer in your pocket. The computing power in your smartphone today is definitely a thousand times more powerful than the computing power we needed for NASA to send a man on the moon, and even recently to send a shuttle to Mars. So that's the first disruption technology that we have seen. The second piece is that with cloud computing, we can give you state-of-the-art compute network and storage cap capabilities in the cloud for you, whether you are a de developer or an entrepreneur, to host your business, your digital business, and launch it to the world. The third disruption is social. On Facebook alone, there's more than a billion users. So within a few clicks, you can reach a billion users, and this has transformed the world to not become only flat, but a small village. Last but not least is the disruption of big data and the wealth of information to help you make some decisions. So the three examples that I'm going to show you is Square, Uber, and Airbnb. And what Square have done, they have realized, because every business and every entrepreneur have a supercomputer, whether in the form of a smartphone or, uh, you know, uh, a tablet, basically how they have said, I can create a dongle that you can plug it to the audio jack, and you can accept credit cards anywhere, anytime, and you have a back-end point-of-sale system connected to the cloud. That's the first disruption they have made. So they have revolutionized the, the point of sale industry. Yesterday, there was a lot of discussions about Sadat and how Sadat is revolutionizing the industry here within the kingdom. But Square, they're doing it in such a way within their first year, they launched 9 million point of sale endpoints that they were sold. Uber, the local version of Uber is Kareem. What Kareem have realized I can leverage three technologies, transform the taxi industry. If you ask the founder of Uber or the founders of Kareem, they will tell you taxi is the service that we provide, but we are a technology company. 
And what they have done is through location-based services. Big data, today with a click of an app, I can locate the nearest taxi and I can have my own personal chauffeur. And with less than 70 riyal, I can go anywhere within Riyadh. Airbnb. Airbnb, they're going to trans transform the hotel industry. I mean, if you talk about Uber, in a recent speech, Ford CEO have said, my biggest competition is no longer General Motors. My biggest competition is Uber. And soon enough, if you talk to the big hotel chains, they're going to tell you my biggest competitors, thanks to leveraging mobility, cloud, big data, and social techniques, is Airbnb. Airbnb is going to become the largest rental platform around the world. So in other words, I can rent my flat, my room, my apartment, my house to anybody and leveraging social technologies, you can rate your experience, whether staying at the particular hotel or apartment or whether I'm a good payer. Data has to be computed as close as possible to the edge. I'll give you a few examples for you to appreciate what I'm talking about. I'll give you three examples from three industries. And the three ind industries are oil and gas, manufacturing, and construction. So within the oil and gas industry, they have oil platforms out offshore in the sea. And a lot of times when you're talking about finding out the porosity of, a mine, of, of an oil field, finding out how the exploration or the drilling process takes place, it requires a lot of computing power to process that data and make decisions. So one of the challenges is limited bandwidth. How can I get high-speed internet all the way offshore? And this is why, thanks to evolutions in mobility and internet of things, we do have that capability, and I'll share it with you in a bit. The second challenge we have seen is manufacturing. Within robots, you have to be able to predict when a robot will break. I'll give you some statistics. In the auto industry, if a breakdown happens to any assembly line, every minute costs $22,000. The biggest challenge that they have here is latency. Unless I can get a fiber, robot, it is going to be a challenge to get the internet of everything capabilities with fog computing all the way to every single robot. And thanks to mobility, we can solve that. Last but not least, and this is an example from Dubai, the cranes, they use, they rely on networks to make sure that the cranes do not overlap or do not hit each other. And this is why network reliability is key. Thanks to fog computing powered by mobility, we have the capability today of not only pushing access, but compute capabilities to run big data, all the way close to these solutions. And by the way, these three examples are available on our, our website. The first one was with Shell, Fanuc Robotics, and SK Solutions in Dubai. And all of them have been powered with real-life examples about how mobility evolved the Internet of Everything and go, gave us those you know, solutions. The second piece, every time somebody talks about mobility, the Internet of Things, and everything, and fog computing, is security. The number of day zero attacks that are evolving today is exponential. And keeping up with how to mitigate and to counter the security challenges is becoming a challenge. Today, you have six devices per person. And in terms of sensing capabilities, you have around 130 sensors per person on the face of the Earth. You're talking about 13 billion things connected today. It's very important to realize that any security solution today must mash up the physical world with video surveillance, with access control, with the virtual world. So you need to combine those capabilities to have a comprehensive solution. Last but not least, when talking about how the internet of everything can digitize and transform businesses, is one thing that I want you to keep in mind, whether you're an entrepreneur or a business owner or working for a big corporation, a lot of times we fall into the trap of comparing data sheets and speeds and feeds, which access point, which technology is far superior in throughput. And today, this doesn't exist in the internet economy because every business have realized that digitization is key to deliver business outcomes.
And this is something that I want you to think about when you're thinking about your business. How could the technology help me grow, be more profitable, manage risk, and differentiate myself? And those are the key things that you should evaluate today, any technology moving forward. Let's talk about big data. A lot of people talk about big data. What is big data? Big data had three evolutions. The first one was about 20 years ago. It was called Analytics 1.0. You're talking about structured data. It's all structured. And it all gives you what is known in the industry as extrinsic motivators. كان يقول إذا جاء عبد الله السواحة من المنطقة الفلانية بالعمر الفلاني وعنده أولاد most likely he will buy X Y Z. We know today, thanks to social media and the evolution of unstructured data, that those are not enough motivators. There are intrinsic motivators for everybody. There's a saying: we buy what we want, not what we need. روح البيت وشوف الأشياء اللي تشتريتوها. I bet you 80% of the things that you have bought because of intrinsic motivators. Some of these intrinsic motivators have to do with status. A lot of people are on social media for status. They just want followers. Some of them have to do with curiosity. They just want to follow somebody else to find out what, do, what are they doing, what are the trends. So we have entered the world of unstructured data, how I can understand preferences based on social media and data that is put in free form. And this is what I love about social media. It has evolved the way companies respond to consumers. And this is very powerful. The next evolution of analytics is called fog computing. We need those capabilities as close as possible to the edge. And by the way, those two last phases, without mobility, we were not able to achieve them. Let's talk about more specific examples of big data. First one is retail. This powerful smartphone and supercomputer, I love to call it your supercomputer in your pocket, is not only powerful for me to push apps to you, but also to understand your behavior. Today, if you are walking in any mall within North America or Western Europe, most likely you will find free Wi-Fi. There's no such thing as free lunch. The reason why they're offering free Wi-Fi is for many reasons. First of all, 80% of you leave your Wi-Fi on, even if you do not connect to an access point. When you leave your Wi-Fi on, your phone starts scanning access points. And when it scans access point, your MAC address. And basically, the access point, when it sniffs it, it registers the MAC address. So I عندي معلومات, أقدر أعرف how many customers are new, Versus repeat. I'll give you an example on Jarir. We all go to Jarir. Jarir today, when you enter the place, you have manual counters. Manual counters. There's some form of intelligence. But what would be really nice for Jarir owners is that they would know Abdullah Suwaha, how many years old Jarir, how many years old Jarir, and when he spends his time in Jarir. And we all can do that without even you connecting to an internet, uh, you know, to an access point. And the way we do that, as I said to you, we fetch your MAC address the moment you leave your Wi-Fi on. So if you want to disable your Wi-Fi right now, it would be a good idea. And the other way we do triangulation. When you start beaconing with access point one, two, three, the strength of your, of your antenna helps me identify in Abdullah Suwaha, كل ما يدخل جرير يروح الكتب أو يروح الالكترونيك سكشن. ف Big data with mobility gave us the ability to detect user behavior, consumer behavior. The second piece is we have the ability to connect. Most retailers right now are telling you, free Wi-Fi, just connect. The way you connect, you have like landing page, a landing page, هذي, you usually read the terms and conditions, and you say, I'm going to be able to Most of us, they click yes. This is the power of big data. And there are privacy challenges, which we can discuss in the panel. However, retailers today are realizing the benefits of big data with mobility by increasing their sales by 
في امريكا على فكره في a lot of companies like went out of business because people walked into the best buy واول شيء اول لما يشوفون الجهاز ويجربونه يفتحون amazon.com فالريتيلرز اللي عندنا they will not adopt a mobile strategy a big data strategy they will disappear and for entrepreneurs this is a big big industry this is an area for you to invest and to develop applications for the likes of extra the likes of jarir and help them adopt these technologies within the retail industry في الملاعب عندنا مثال هنا مع نورسك فوتبول كلوب في النرويج we help them understand the fans behavior on average في الدول الاسكندنافيه اللي يحضر المباريات يصرف تقريبا 6 دولار عن طريق البيج داتا رفعناها من 6 دولار الى 30 دولار ليش لان حطينا له شاشات تحمسه انه يروح ياخذ بيفرجز عصاير او منتجات معينه نعرف البيهيفير حقه ويبوش تو هيم فري واي فاي ويدخل على دعايات وي كان مونيتايز اول اوف ذيس ديفرنت اوبورتونيتيز سمارت اند كونكتد سيتيز ذس از ذا لاست بيس اوف ماي برزنتيشن هاو ذا انترنت اوف ايفريثينج از غانا اكشلي ديجيتايز اند ترانسفورم سيتيز وي سين ان ذا فيديو سم اوف ذا تشالنجز ذات ذير سينج ان يوروب وما اعتقد هي غريبه علينا ذا فيرست وان از باركينج Do you know how much, on average, a citizen in Europe spends time of their life looking for a parking spot? A third of their life, close to a third of their life, just looking for a parking spot. When we start the metro here in Riyadh, we feel the same thing. Go to the Tahliya, and you will see that 80% of all the conversations are people looking for parking, and 20% of the people have other hobbies. What's this is the biggest challenge, parking. Second challenge اللي عندهم اللي هو growth عندك ال urbanization الناس قاعدين ينتقلون من المدن النائية إلى المدن الكبيرة هنا عندنا في المملكة ثلاثة وثمانين في المية were urbanized في ضغط كبير على المدن الكبيرة هذا حيحط pressure كثير على المدن إنها كيف تكون ذكية في أمريكا ال highways الطرق السريعة the last time they built an interstate a highway كان في ألف وتسعمية وواحد وخمسين نفس الشيء عندنا في الرياض الطرق السريعة ما أعتقد أنها حيكون في توسعة بس ما حيكون في طرق جديدة لأنها it's already built and infrastructure is there how can I optimize it how can I make it more efficient 30% of the traffic is jammed because of parking searching how can I leverage technologies يكون عندك sensors وتطبيق يقول لك when the parking is available في التحلية how can you book it but in essence I've shared here today with you How the Internet of Everything, powered by mobility in the mobile cloud era, can connect the unconnected, can transform lives, businesses, and societies. According to the United Nations, they have declared in 2012 the Internet not as a luxury or as a commodity, but as a human right. We have a very unique opportunity in the kingdom to leverage these technologies to transform practically everything. I would like to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present to you how the Internet of Everything powered by Cisco Mobility has transformed businesses and the world. And thank you so much for your time.